Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deep in Science lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen and in your books I'd like to get down today's title which is Inheritance. For your Star Trek activity I'd like to sketch this animal cell and label its organelles. And I'd also like to predict which organelle is going to be a big part of this lesson. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. So let's have a look at this cell together. In the middle we've got the nucleus and this contains our genetic material. Around the outside you've got the cell membrane which controls what goes into and out of the cell. You've got the cytoplasm which is the site of chemical reactions. You've got your mitochondria which is the site of aerobic respiration which provides the cell with energy. And you've got your ribosomes which are the site of protein synthesis. In today's lesson we're going to be defining DNA chromosomes, genes and alleles. We're going to explain how genetic information is passed from parents to offspring and we're going to describe how mutations can occur and how they can affect future generations. Today's lesson is going to be focusing on the genetic material contained within the nucleus. This genetic material takes the form of 23 pairs of chromosomes and all of these chromosomes are made up of DNA which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Contained within these strands of DNA are sections which code for single characteristics called genes. Contained on these strands of DNA are genes, and these are sections of DNA which code for a single characteristics. Characteristics such as eye colour or hair colour, whether or not you can roll your tongue, and whether your earlobes are attached or whether they hang free. This brings us to another keyword, the allele, and these are variations of the same gene. So if you've got the eye colour gene, you can have the blue eye allele and the brown eye allele. They're both eye colour genes, but they're different variations of the same gene. Same for hair colour. You can have a gene for black hair, brown hair, or blonde hair, or any other colour of hair. They're all hair colour genes, but they're variations of the same gene. These are the alleles. We're going to break now for a task, and we're going to answer these three questions. I want to put these in order of size, chromosome, gene, and nucleus. I want to identify what is wrong with the following set of chromosomes. And I'd also like to suggest which pair of chromosomes contains the most alleles and explain your answer. If you really want a challenge, you could suggest whether the chromosome set above belongs to a male or a female. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. So let's go through some of these answers. The biggest is the nucleus, and inside the nucleus you get the chromosome, and your chromosome are made up of series of genes. Next was to identify what was wrong with the following set of chromosomes. Now, our chromosomes tend to come in pairs. In this diagram, if we look at chromosome set 16, there's three chromosomes. This set of chromosomes has one extra chromosome than a normal set. Suggesting which pair of chromosomes will contain the most alleles would be chromosome set 1 and the reason is because it's the largest in size so it can contain the most genes. This challenge then, suggesting whether the chromosomes belong to a male or a female, these chromosomes belong to a male. They have both the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. If this belonged to a female then they would have two X chromosomes. So now we can define our DNA, chromosomes, genes and alleles. So next we want to explain how genetic information is passed from parents to offspring. In a normal human body cell there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. When a sperm cell is created, one chromosome from each pair goes into one sperm cell and the other half of the chromosomes will go into another sperm cell. The same thing happens in the egg cell. One chromosome from each pair will go into one egg cell and then the other half of the chromosomes will go into another egg cell. So that means our sperm cell and our egg cell each contain half of the amount of genetic material as our normal human body cell. So our egg cell contains 23 chromosomes. And then upon fertilization, our sperm cell will deliver another 23 chromosomes. So then we'll have 23 
pairs of chromosomes, or 46 chromosomes, the same amount as we have in a normal human body cell. For our next task, I would like to answer the following four questions. I want to know how many chromosomes are in a normal human body cell, how many chromosomes are there in a sperm cell, in an egg cell, and how many chromosomes are there in a fertilized egg cell. And if you really want a challenge, you can have a read of this statement. It is the father that determines the sex of the baby. I'd like to evaluate that statement and say whether or not you agree. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. In a normal human body cell, there are 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. How many chromosomes are there in a sperm cell? There's 23. In an egg cell, there are 23 because when these sex cells are made, Half of the genetic material will go into one sperm cell or one egg cell and the other half will go into the other sperm cell or the other egg cell. How many chromosomes are there in a fertilized egg cell? Well, when this 23 chromosomes meets that 23 chromosomes, we end up with 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Did you have a go at the challenge? If you did, I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. So now we can explain how genetic information is passed from parents to offspring. Next, we're going to describe how mutations occur and how they can affect our future generations. So our genes are made up of a combination of four genetic bases called adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And we shorten these to A, T, C, and G. If we take a look at our blue eyes allele, you can see that this is made up of a combination of these four genetic bases. If we have a look at a string of DNA from our brown eyes allele, then you can see that there isn't that much difference. There is only one genetic base which is different. A cytosine has changed to an adenine. And all it takes is one change in one genetic base in order for a person to exhibit a different characteristic. Now these bases can be changed by mutations. Mutations are random changes to these genetic bases. Let's say someone had the brown eyes allele and that brown eye gene went to one of their sperm cells. That gene in that sperm cell could undergo a mutation and that adenine base could get changed to a guanine base. So just the change of one base has resulted in this person having green eyes rather than brown eyes. Now this sort of change wouldn't happen to you and it wouldn't happen to me. Once your eye color has been established, if there is a change, if there is a mutation in your genes, you would not then exhibit a different eye color because this mutation would only happen in one singular cell and it wouldn't happen in all the other cells which make up the color of your eye. Next, we're going to have a look at this task. We've got the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus and it could become resistant to an antibiotic called methicillin if a guanine base mutates into an adenine base and this methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus is often called MRSA, one of our hospital superbugs. I would like you to use this information to determine the genetic sequence for MRSA. Now, some mutations can be beneficial. I would like you to suggest how a mutation that affects blood clotting can be beneficial. And I would also like to suggest how two blue-eyed parents can have a green-eyed child. And if you really want a challenge, I'd also like to know if there is anything that can increase your chances of getting a mutation. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. So our information said that this bacteria becomes resistant when a guanine mutates into an adenine base. We've already got one guanine base in this sequence of A, T's, C's, and G's. So our sequence is going to remain the same with the exception of that one guanine changing into an adenine. We said that some mutations can be beneficial and I asked you to suggest how this could be beneficial in terms of blood clotting. You could get a mutation which allows for scabs to form quicker, which means it would prevent more blood loss. Suggesting how two blue-eyed parents can have a green-eyed child, there would have to be a mutation in one of the gametes, either the egg cell 
or the sperm cell because each sperm cell is going to be carrying a blue eyed allele. Each egg cell is going to be carrying a blue eye allele. So there has to be a mutation in one of the gametes, either the egg or the sperm. And that mutation would have to be in the gene which affects eye color. Thinking about this challenge then, there are many factors which can increase your risk of getting a mutation and we call them risk factors. These include smoking, passive smoking, ionizing radiation from the sun, malnutrition, lack of exercise and old age. So now we can describe how mutations occur and how they can affect our future generations. Which means we've got one more thing I'd like you to do. I would like you to explain how your DNA is a combination of your mother's and father's DNA for four marks. Which means we've got one more thing left to do, which is our plenary. And I would like you to explain how your DNA is a combination of your mother's DNA and your father's DNA for four marks. So you need to be making four valid points. And if you really want a challenge, I'd also like you to answer, can two brown eyed parents have a blue eyed child? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video. And when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. So let's have a look at this. A normal human body cell contains 46 chromosomes. That's true for both mom and dad. When a sperm cell is created, 23 of those chromosomes are transferred to the sperm cell. When an egg cell is created, 23 of those chromosomes are transferred to an egg cell. And when an egg cell is fertilized by the sperm, 23 chromosomes from each of our sex cells will give us the full complement of chromosomes. We'll get 46. Did you have a go at the challenge? If you did, we're going to be having a look at that next time. But that's the end of our inheritance lesson, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I appreciate all the support. I'll see you next time.